Yeah, welcome to the 2024 guide to printing line items from Glide. This video is relevant for you if you are new to Docs Automator and you want to learn how to print line items from Glide, but it's also relevant for you if you know Docs Automator for a while already, you have used line items uh, or have printed line items already, you're using it already in your projects um, because there's a much much simplified syntax in Docs Automator v3 and we're going to look at that new syntax in this video. Let's get into it, let's see how that works. So as you can see here on my screen uh, I have a template which I've added to a sample automation here um, uh, and you can see the new syntax here. The syntax basically now does not require you to add line items in front of every variable used um, in the table. If I jump into this um, legacy doc here, uh, you can see this This is how it was before. Um, you had to give uh, line underscore items underscore one, two, etc. cetera for um, all your line item tables in front of every, uh, every variable in that line items table. Um, so pretty convoluted and um, uh, this is now much simplified. As you can see here, that's, that's how it works. Um, as I said before, um, the line items indicator needs to be given as the first thing. Um, that's really important. And the first cell is the first thing in the line items row. Uh, previously in Docs Automator, we always talked about line item tables because they had to be defined as tables. As you can see here, a header row and then the variable row was very strict in that sense, that's how it had to be. Now it's much more flexible. These rows can actually, these rows can actually stand alone. So uh, I could have uh, this header rows above or I could add rows below, it would still work. So you can think about line items from now on much more in terms of line item rows than line item tables. The row defines a place where then multiple items will be iterated uh, and rows will be added for the data passed. As you can see here as well, the prefix is missing. So once this is declared, you can just use um, just normal variables without uh, using that line items prefix. And one other thing, or no, two other things, like one is you can add uh, static text in here. So you could even say something like, uh, uh, this is a dollar amount. Right? You don't wouldn't have to pass that from Glide anymore in this case. You can just do it like that. Um, but you can also um, use multiple variables per cell. So you could also, um, I don't know, add a currency symbol right behind the unit, for instance. Um, let's say you have a case where you have uh, sometimes euro amount, sometimes dollar amount, sometimes a yen amount, and all different currencies you want to add to your document, then you could pass that flexibly as a second variable in the same cell. For those of you who are new to Docs Automator, that wasn't possible before. Before you were just limited to one variable per cell. That's the new syntax. Um, it's a lot easier um, and um, I, I think also less error prone than it was before. Let's see how we prepare the data. It's relatively easy because we basically uh, prepare the data exactly with those variables. So in uh, my case here, I'm printing invoices because that's the, also the template that we have, of course. Uh, and every invoice, I only have one in here, invoice one has line items. So here we have uh, fruits, bananas, apples, and pears. Um, how it works then, for those of you who are new, uh, you have to build a row JSON. What is that? You basically say every row should consist of this data. So the row JSON, best way to do this is with the JSON object. Uh, let's remove the image here for a second. Uh, and as you can see here, product amount unit total, uh, these are the variables that we have here in our line items row. Product amount unit total. So I have to use these here as well and then I map them to the corresponding values here in my table. And this basically creates the JSON for exactly that row. What we then do is we go one level up to invoices and we build a joined list of those line items. So I have a relation field where I'm connecting all of these um, line items 
uh, to my invoice, so my bananas, my apples, my pears. Uh, this works by specifying which invoice they belong to in this column. On the invoice then I have a relation field where I'm um, saying okay add these when the value in the invoice column is um, the name of the invoice here. So all of these three got added now. I can then use a joint list and what the joint list does as you can see here it basically joins all of those rows. So I have three line items on my invoice uh, with the data that we've created on every line item row in that table and now we're joining all of those. So we have three objects basically that are joined with a comma. Last thing then is that we have to turn this into an array, a list of things, um, which we do with this template column. Um, template column and then square brackets are in the middle or whatever you want to put there and then you, you substitute this with the joint list uh, and then you basically get this these square brackets around that. This is what we pass to Docs Automator. For those of you who know it already, nothing has changed. Uh, that's how it was before as well. What has changed though now is that multiple line items are constructed in the exact same way, which makes it a lot easier. Why is that possible? Because if we now go into the layout editor and look like how we're passing that data, uh, sorry, we're going to the invoices table and I have a button here, print invoice, and I use the docs admitter generate document action here. And then I'm passing uh, some data, um, which we uh, find here as well, client name, street, etc. cetera. Um, so as you can see, these, this has to be given without curly brackets. And then I'm passing my line items. Before, everything had to be passed with the line items key. Even multiple line item tables had to be passed with line items. Now you actually specify the number here already. So you say line items one, and then you're mapping the array that we've created. By the way, for those of you who um, no arrays, no objects. We're passing this as a text because as of now, the Glide integration doesn't really natively handle line items. So what's happening here actually is Docs Automator is interpreting or passing that text that is passed here. I hope that changes relatively soon still this year. So we pass line items one and then the array that we've constructed. That means if we have a second, third, fourth, etc., line items table in our template, we can do the exact same thing. So for those of you who remember how difficult it was to build the, the JSON for multiple line item tables, this is a massive simplification of how it works. So if you would have a second one, you would just um, add a variable here again, you would say uh, line items two, and you would just pass your second array. Very, very simple. Um, and I highly encourage you to change your existing setups to this because it's really less error prone. So having mapped this, we can print and uh, look at it. And there we go. Our data is printed. As you can see here, pieces for instance is a static value on it. And in front of it is now our amount. Um, it looks pretty good. What I don't like, um, and there we can look at a new feature of Docsumbit as well while we're here, is that discount and shipping is still given even though there is no value. We didn't really map a value. We don't have a value in this case. Previously, you had to create a second template. Now you can dynamically change this. If we go into our automation settings and we find these variables here at the bottom, we find discount and shipping. So these two that are empty. And I have this little gear icon next to it and I can say uh, delete line row when empty uh, and I do the same on shipping. What this does is if no value is passed for this variable, um, it's empty, then we're deleting the entire line, um, which is gonna make this look a lot better. So let's uh, do this again. And there we go. Uh, basically shipping and discount are deleted from our printed PDF as if they've never never been there in the first place. Um, and that makes basically creating these uh, dynamic documents 
a lot easier and is a very, very powerful because you can use this anywhere, anywhere in those templates and create documents with it. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, there are a few more new features uh, also surrounding line items, but uh, let's leave it at that for now. This shows you uh, Doximeter's new syntax. If you're new to Doximeter, you now know how to uh, include line items in your documents. If you have any questions, please reach out anytime. Here to help, always happy to support. Until then, I wish you happy automating and speak to you very soon.